Hi everybody and welcome to Simply Scuba. In today's deep dive, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the legality of scuba diving. So scuba diving is a kind of unusual hobby in that unlike skiing or basketball and other hobbies, you need certifying courses to learn how to scuba dive, sort of. Uh, I mean, you don't need a skateboarding license or a cert card to go hiking, but because scuba diving has a very strong certification process throughout, people are often unsure the legality of certain aspects of scuba diving. I mean, do you legally need a cert card to actually go scuba diving? Can you go scuba diving just in anywhere? These are but a few of the questions that we're gonna answer in this video. Well, I say answer because this video talks about a lot of legal stuff. I need, of course, a quick disclaimer because I'm not a lawyer, I, I never have been. I'm just going on information that I found online and I'm probably gonna be using a lot of the, the wrong official terms. So the information and opinions provided do not address your individual requirements and for informational, or well, therefore informational purposes only, they do not constitute any form of legal advice and should not be relied on or treated as a substitute for specific advice relevant to particular circumstances and is not intended to be relied upon by by you in making or refraining from making any specific decisions. So really double check the laws and regulations in your specific area because I can just feel the comments already coming in because we're talking about legal stuff because laws are different everywhere and there are just so many varying circumstances. But for now, where can you dive, legally speaking? Is it illegal to go scuba diving or buy scuba diving equipment without a license or certification? Not really, uh, in most places. Uh, I'm gonna be saying in most places and in a lot of cases a lot throughout this video. Uh, but there's no legal requirement to show a scuba diving cert card when you're buying a complete set of scuba diving equipment and then you just walk yourself into the nearest ocean. You don't need a cert card for that. However, in saying that, I wouldn't. Scuba diving is fairly dangerous, even when you know what you're doing. It's even more dangerous if you haven't been taught how to scuba dive. As with pretty much everything in this video, there will be places which do require you to produce a cert card, but more often than not, you won't need one. Whilst not illegal and you shouldn't get arrested uh, in most places, you you will come across a lot of roadblocks if you try and buy dive equipment without a cert card, uh, or try and go scuba diving with a certain dive center without being qualified. You won't be able to find a reputable dive center around the world that will take you on a dive without first seeing or at least looking up your certification. I don't think any reputable dive center would open themselves up to the legal firestorm of taking an uncertified diver out, unless it's on a training dive obviously, um, and then something goes wrong. As far as diving equipment, we can honestly tell when you're uncertified and most dive centers will probably be fairly blunt uh, if you're buying dive equipment for yourself and you're not obviously qualified. You can buy it legally, there's, there's nothing wrong with it, we'd be losing, doing ourselves out of a sale, but most dive centers would rather steer you away from buying dive equipment uh, if you're unqualified because you might end up hurting yourself and we don't want that. But there's usually nothing stopping you from buying equipment if you're uncertified. One area that I've been asked about a few times actually is where parent A is a certified diver uh, with their own equipment and they want to take their child on a dive so that they can explore it. Again, it's not illegal in most places. You can take your kid to do all sorts of extreme sports and stuff, it's, it's your child. But the difference in scuba diving is that you're taking the kid to a undeniably dangerous situation. And if something goes wrong, an argument could be made against you because you do have a duty of care as a parent and as a dive buddy. I'm gonna be talking about duty of care later. Um, and this could fall under some kind of child endangerment law or some kind of negligence. Now, 
there is a lot of training and requirements that go into scuba diving instructor training. If you're not qualified and in status as an instructor, then taking your kid diving could be argued in court that you're putting them in a obviously dangerous situation. There's a lot of ways that they can hurt themselves underwater without even knowing it. And as with all things, it's usually just best to err on the side of caution, even if it isn't illegal per se. One important aspect of diving uncertified is any insurance policies. If you don't have any certifications, I guarantee you there will not be a legal insurance document on the planet that will cover you. You need to be certified, and that's usually one of the very first clauses in an insurance document. But this can also mean that if you're diving somewhere you're not qualified for, that's a real easy out for the insurance company and you just simply won't be covered. If you dive, or if you have an accident one centimeter below your certified depth, a lot of insurance policies just will not cover you. If you're diving inside a cave or a shipwreck without that specific cert card or certification, a lot of insurance documents, they also won't help you. So it's always worth double checking. It's not something you'll go to prison for, but it'll cost you in other ways. Is it illegal to go scuba diving without a buddy? Again, no, not technically, but it is dangerous. If you get stuck or your gear malfunctions underwater and you don't have a buddy to rely on, it's all on you to get back to the surface safely. Some dive sites may have a stipulation that everybody must dive in a buddy pair. Uh, I'm gonna touch more on um, uh, more on who owns the water and what you have to do if someone owns that specific water in a later section um, because yeah it, it depends on the water obviously but another consideration is your insurance again there are specific solo diver certifications for a reason but in public waterways there's nothing stopping you really and until something goes wrong it's rare that you'll be arrested for diving solo even uncertified but you're literally on your own if something goes wrong and you need to consider the costs and the lives of emergency services who may be called out to rescue or recover you. Can you earn money whilst using your scuba diving skills? So this is where it gets a little gray and you really do need to do some specific research where you are because in a lot of places, it's fine, but in others, if you earn money for activities in the water, HSE gets involved and it gets, it can officially be defined as commercial diving. And if you don't have that commercial diving ticket or you're not doing everything as HSE requires, you can get in some very deep water. I mean, actual years in prison for simply earning money under the water. Even if it's something as simple as recovering a lost wedding ring or something, if someone's paid you to do that in certain areas, um, be very, very careful and make sure that you can do it legally because if you can't, ah, it's not worth it. Where can and can't you go diving? So you can go diving in a lot of places around the world. Obviously it has to be in the water, but it is important that you do your homework before you just sling a tank on your back and jump in the bit of water. The obvious places that you can't go near are military naval bases, shipping lanes, harbors and ports. They don't want you just swimming around their land and they're not going to have signposts underwater defining their boundary. So it's best to look up and ask beforehand because the best case scenario, if you're diving in their waters is that they'll trespass you. Divers have been arrested leaving the water in a public area by waiting police officers because someone noticed their bubbles in the wrong place and then they just follow their bubble trail back to where they exited the water. Some shipwrecks, especially those where people have died or there are rare artifacts, have specific regulations about diving in and around them. So again, just do your homework first and just sort of see what's 
what's required of you. There are sometimes local requirements that you can get into trouble for if you don't uh, display a diver down flag or something. Uh, before you go diving in a new spot, just do some research online, find out who owns the land, if anybody does, and have a chat with them. Make sure you're doing everything you should and you're not doing something that you shouldn't do. If you're diving on someone else's property or land, like a, a park or just someone specifically owns that land uh, that contains a lake or a shoreline, then they can make their own regulations that you must be certified or you can and can't do certain things in that patch of water. And again, they're free to trespass you if you don't follow their rules, if they own that land. Some areas require a permit or a donation to enter, uh, and you may exit the water to flashing lights if you haven't done so, so do your best to research the area that you're diving. Ask a local dive center or the local law enforcement so you know that you're not treading on anybody's toes and you're not going to end up in handcuffs because you didn't know you had to do something or not. If you engage in recreational diving, then there is an assumption of risk that you recognize. You also have a duty of care to other divers in the water. If it's just you and a buddy, uh, if you follow all of your training, then you should cover your duty of care. Stuff like planning the dive, checking both of your gear, helping your buddy in an incident are all included in your duty of care. Breach of this duty can be seen as negligence in a civil case. There's no definitive, this is exactly what you should and shouldn't do in the water, but as long as you act as a prudent person would and do your best and whatever happened wasn't reasonably foreseeable, then you should be fine. Oh, geez, just legal stuff. Uh, I mean, I almost been this video about three or four times whilst I was writing it because all of it is just it depends, and in some cases, and this is probably going to be out of date before we even upload it. I mean, researching legal stuff is tough enough because when you search online, it's going to be a, a mixture of different laws from different countries and different provinces. So the most important thing that you can do right now is to look up the specific laws for where you are and where you're going to be diving. Just make sure that if you follow your training and you act as a prudent person and try to err on the side of caution and everything should be fine. Now, that does not constitute as legal advice though, none of this does, but hopefully it has made some of you think about some of the things that you may need to think about the next time that you plan a dive. Think about who might own the water, what requirements there may be. Um, just try to think about any potential legal issues because you can't just do whatever you want, wherever you want. And even if you're diving somewhere familiar, check for any updates from time to time because they can and will change. Anyway, thank you for watching. Just make sure that you do your homework and you're not treading on anyone's toes or doing anything illegal where you are. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and safe diving.